Well, David Goldblatt joins us now from Bristol in the UK. He's the author of the book, The Games, A Global History of the Olympics. Um, David, thank you very much for talking to us. We heard the organisers of London 2012 saying that future host cities can learn from their experiences. Are they right? Was it a success story, London 2012? Well, it depends what you want to look at. It's certainly been a success for West Ham United, which is a private company and a Premier League football club, which has taken occupation of a stadium of something in the region of $400 million uh, and is paying a peppercorn rent for the privilege. Similarly, if you want to look at um, London's pledge to raise the level of participation in sport, which was to be the greatest legacy of all, actually the number of people playing sport and regularly exercising in the UK since London 2012 has declined. So it depends what you want to look at. What about the regeneration and the infrastructure of the area? Well, I mean, again, it's good news that a brownfield site was um, was cleaned uh, and there is a certain amount of new housing and there's a certain amount of affordable housing along some very expensive luxury flats. I mean, again, I, I'm looking at your picture. It depends how you feel about the, uh, the orbital currently costing £10,000 merely to maintain possibly one of the worst works of public art ever erected in the UK. <laughs> so there is some benefits. I don't, you know, I'm not being a Cassandra about it. But is it actually worth the $10, $11 billion in toto that it cost? What were the opportunity costs of doing so? How could it have been spent differently? Would you have got a better result? I think the jury is very much out on London 2012, which is one of the more successful games in terms of leaving a legacy. We, we can, I mean, probably delve into the history books and look at uh, white elephants and the cost of games. I'm thinking uh, Montreal in 1976 was probably the first and biggest of its kind, where the debt there took, was it nearly 30 years to repay? What can uh, future host cities learn from that experience? Well, don't invest in very experimental, iconic architecture. Don't leave it to your mayor alone to make the decision uh, um, on what is going, is going to be built. Um, you know, have an open, transparent, democratic process, build sensible architecture. Think about the future, not about glory. That was 40 years ago. In that time, is there signs that, that any of these host cities have learned from Montreal's experience? Well, you know, Los Angeles in 1984 is the example of the games that finally turned a profit, and they did so by basically not building anything, uh, as well as being incredibly smart about their sponsorship and their um, television rights. But very few cities are Los Angeles. I mean, even today, the 2024 bid that they're making is that they can say that UCLA and its student dorms of the Olympic Village, and bang, there you go. Almost nowhere in the world um, can do that. So I I think that's an unrepeatable model. Similarly, Barcelona um, clearly transformed the image of the city and from being a kind of backwater and a rust belt uh, port, it's become a very successful tourist um, city and much wealthier in the process. But rather than being seven years of catalytic madness like we've seen at more recent Olympics, Barcelona was the product of, you know, uh, 17 years of really carefully thought out micro urban development backed by public money. Um, and of course, Barcelona really was a hidden gem. How many people have got a bit of Mediterranean urban coastline suddenly that they can pull out of the bag? Or indeed the architectural legacy of Gaudi and the art of Picasso. <laughs> so everyone's been trying to be Barcelona since 1992 and not a single country has come anywhere uh, near. And I don't think anywhere will under the current model of staging and funding the games. OK, we've, we've got about 60 seconds left. I want to ask you about the impact of, of Rio and, and what you think that they may have learnt in the build-up to the games from what you've seen and what you've read. Are these games going to be a success both over the next uh, couple of weeks and in the long term, do you think? I think over the next couple of weeks they're going to be a great success. I have absolutely no doubt about the capacity of uh, the Brazilian authorities to stage a grand televised spectacular, whatever else is going on. They managed it with the Pan American Games in 2007, you know, when the favelas were under kind of lockdown and, uh, and siege. So I think the Olympics will go just fine. As to the future, actually I think that the disaster has already happened. 
you know, which is the waste of public money, the tragic breaking of legacy promises, and all of the lost opportunities to actually do something in Rio, where the need for infrastructure is absolutely screaming and almost nothing has been delivered. And what has been delivered is for the use of uh, primarily the wealthiest part of the city. OK, uh, David, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. David Goldblatt there, the author of uh, The Games, A Global History of the Olympics. Thank you.